Hi, I'm Jeff from Home Renovation DIY. In today's video, we are installing a brand new mixed fuel stove and a brand new dishwasher courtesy of our friends from Z-Line. Yes, it's a sponsor video, but don't worry, there's a ton of great information here for you. So whether you're doing a brand new renovation or just a remodel and maybe removing a cabinet to add a dishwasher, we're gonna show you all the steps for all the hookups and how to connect everything so that you can have a great functioning kitchen and save yourself a ton of money, all right? So take that money you're gonna save from the install and put it into some quality equipment. Now, the only thing I did in this video that wasn't DIY is I called my gas guy because when you get good professionals to do stuff like that, that's money in the bank. All right, let's just get started. So for most dishwasher installations, you're gonna basically need just a couple things. One of them is you're gonna to have to go out and buy your own water supply hookup. Now the dishwashers come with two standards. One of them is like a garden hose standard. And the other one is it'll come with a female thread that matches this, or the garden hose thread. Then you'll need the gasket to go with it. In this situation, we're not using the garden hose, which is good. I kind of prefer the elbow thread better. <laughs> Here we go. Wow, they really got this tied together, don't they? Okay. So let's separate the wheat from the chaff here. Boom, get rid of that. I'm not a big fan of having stickers laying around, so there we go. Now, the trickiest part about this is that this hose goes through the hole at the bottom of the cabinet and connects to a water shutoff valve just on the other side. We'll get to all that in a minute. But you'll see that the hose itself is only so long. And in these kind of situations, the dishwasher itself has a track system that this will sit in, but this doesn't want to play ball. Look at that. Like it's very not nice. So what you want to do is you want to drill your hole a little bit bigger than you need. I went inch and a quarter and I'm actually going to tape a line to this. Okay. So that I can pull it through after. That way, I can set this under the dishwasher without any difficulty. Okay, so for installing a dishwasher, you need three basic things. You need power, you need a water supply, and you need a drain. So the water supply traditionally does not come with the dishwasher. The drain does, okay? So you have to go and pick out your water supply. Now there are two standards. There's this L with a male thread on it, or there's this kind of thing here with a gasket and more like a garden hose hookup. This is not as common anymore. It's more common with older machines. Most of the newer ones are using this system, okay? So you buy this at the local hardware store and it's just dishwasher supply line. It's one standard, it's nice and simple. Now, if your particular dishwasher is set up where you're gonna be um, not in a traditional system next to the sink, where you, don't, where you have the water supply, you can get extensions that will tie together and you could braid another 20, 30 inches, six feet, 10 feet, doesn't really matter. <laughs> As long as you need to make it. You also need power supply. Now, today dishwashers are running on less and less and less power. They're getting more energy efficient, like all appliances, right? So what I gotta do here is I'm going to actually just drill a hole, run my wire into the basement, and I'm gonna make my connection down there later. It's an unfinished basement. But I am gonna write dishwasher on the line, just to avoid any confusion in the future, okay? And okay. now a lot of modern dishwashers, they're getting very, very quiet. And the one I'm using in here is actually supplied to us by Z-Line. And their claim to fame is that they're very energy efficient, but incredibly quiet. Like they're even quieter than their hood fans. So if you're looking for a high quality machine, I'm going to maybe recommend that. We're going to run it through a few cycles and have a really good experience, hopefully, with it. But it does have a unique feature. It installs, like a lot of other newer machines, where the base is solid and has a groove track for the electrical and a groove track for the plumbing. And all the connections are done up front. It's nice and convenient. So when you're setting this up, you can actually put a line four inches, okay? And this is where your electrical is. This is where your plumbing line is. So what I do is I'm just going to basically drill my hole four inches off the wall at the back, okay? Because that's the flexibility that you have. Most of these machines are about 22 inches deep and your cabinet is 24, 24 and a half, depending on the situation. So you got a little buffer room in the back for running your hoses. Now in my situation, that leaves me right on top of the tree in my basement. Yeah, that's right, I'm in an 1880 farmhouse and that's a tree, so I'm gonna have to drill to the left. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna leave lots of slack here so that when I'm sliding my machine back, 
I'm going over top of my electrical and plumbing lines in that track system, and I'm not going to get any kinks. So. Very important, before you drill a hole in a floor, go downstairs and confirm that you don't have any gas lines or electrical. <laughs> All these things that making drilling a hole um, rather costly. Avoid that if you can. Dishwasher line goes right down there. Okay, that's plenty. Now I'm going to feed this over here, and I'm going to have lots to lighten that up. Okay. Now that I have that, I have my plumbing supply line and I have my drain. Now I've already drilled the hole. You can see up here, the top back of the cabinet, I drilled my hole for my drain line. Because you want the drain to go up and then come down into the connection in the, in the plumbing so that it's always evacuating, okay? And that ends up holding water in the drain line and acts like a P-trap. And that's very beneficial for the dishwasher. Now there's not a whole lot to do other than get the dishwasher and let's stick it in the back of the hole. Do, 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 do. Alrighty. Brilliant. Sexy little machine. Now this little machine here has a customized panel for the front, so you can go stainless steel like we are, or you can actually get a door that's the same as the cabinetry in the kitchen, and you can make it a hidden dishwasher. It's up to you. But the idea here is simple. We have the hose in the back. The only trick with installing a dishwasher is getting all three of these different source lines into the back of the cabinet area and through the holes without getting them kinked. <laughs> That's the only trick. So we'll start with the hose, the drain line. I'm going to stick it in that top corner. I'm going to take the electrical line, okay, and we're going to feed it through that groove that's underneath the machine for the electrical side, okay. Now that's in place. Now I'm going to take the water supply, put it through its track system here, until it comes out the other side. And then we'll pull this up just a little bit. The whole idea here is to keep the machine flat on the floor, because the electrical and the plumbing both move freely. So, we reach through the back, stick that in the hole. All right. Whew. Now, it takes a little bit of effort here, but you want to move the machine back a few inches at a time, Move the machine, reach back into the sink, grab the water supply line and the drain line, and keep putting on tension. And keep all these lines from kinking. We'll go a few inches. Okay, there we go. We are in great shape. Now, this particular cabinet, we set the hole up to be at 24 inches, which is perfect for this machine. Look at that. Now, when we have the panel installed, we'll be able to set the perfect depth. Okay, look at that. Okay, so I got a couple of questions about the installation. Water supply, the power, no problem hooking all that up. I'm a little bit concerned about the gap. I just want to make sure that I'm installing this properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get on the phone, I'm going to call the appliance educator, and get them on the phone just to talk me through this and see if they got any pointers to help me out. Well, I'm looking at two and a quarter inches. So okay. do, do I just raise the feet so that, that that closes the top? Yeah, yeah. Alrighty. Yeah, because I'm looking, I, it doesn't seem like there's a, um, uh, a side install option. Yeah, there. Uh, it looked basically to us like there were just those two anchor screws on the top of the unit, and that was pretty much what could uh, keep it sitting in place. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In in terms of mounting, um, most situations when you open the door, you've got a gasket seal for the door, right? Okay. And then there is a. Uh, a secondary interior gasket, and that creates that about an inch and a quarter gap between the two gaskets for the side rail. And in most dishwashers, you can screw through the side of that into the into your cabinetry if you can't screw through the top. Uh, and that'll actually, I mean, that makes sense too as far as stability when the things running. You know, oh, yeah, huge, because then you can you can anchor both sides with when you have a stone countertop without 
doing some fake facade silliness, right? Yeah. So it looks like yeah, it looks like that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just pre-drill the hole from the from the outside, and then I'll put my screw and mount it. I have the ability to um, level the feet. Well, there we go. I finally got my answer. Now listen, just in case you're wondering, I'm getting all of my technical advice from this guy right here, the appliance educator. Now, they're a, they're a young, new YouTube ch channel. You really need to check these guys out. They're doing a lot of videos all around, you know, how to install. It's not an easy business, but I didn't know how to level this bloody thing, and now I do. So hats off to the appliance educator. I'm just looking at their YouTube channel. And they've got all the details on here for the whole process. So instead of me taking all the time off your schedule to go through the whole process, I'm going to cover the basics. And if you want more specific details dealing with Z-Line, then I suggest you go check them out. Because these guys know what the heck they're talking about. That is awesome. Oh, it's good to have resources, eh? So the leveling system basically is right here. There you go. That was just way too easy. When you're installing your dishwasher, let's just recap. There's only precious few things that you need to do. One, you've got to get your drain hose connected to your plumbing underneath the sink. We did that. Two, you've got to get your water supply connected to a shutoff valve. Hot water, of course. We did that. Now we've got to connect this to the machine. And three, you've got to get your power supply connected to the machine. Now, once this is level and all that is connected, the only thing left is for us to install our door on here, and then we'll set it nice and flush with the rest of the cabinet. We'll open it up and screw it in. And I'll show you a secret for that, because whenever you're dealing with quartz or marble tops, it really limits your ability to fasten it to the top. So you can actually cheat and screw it into the side. And that's what I'm gonna do today. But for now, let's just focus on our mechanical assembly and get this all done. Of course, dishwashers come standard. Almost every dishwasher in the world now comes with this little elbow, okay? There's still a few models out there that are using like a garden hose fitting, but most of the time, this is what you're gonna get. It comes attached to the hose in the kit. Take it off, add the thread, the Teflon tape there, and then you wanna thread that in, okay? There we go. All right. And you want to get it turned around until it is facing down. I'm going to come in from the side here. Okay, I'm going to hand tighten this thread. Now the supply line itself has a rubber gasket. So the secret here is to go hand tight. And once you got it on, hand tight. Use the wrench until you can feel that gasket engage. There we go, right there and then we'll push the extra line back out of the way. And that should be perfect right there and not kinked. Okay, awesome. All right, um, so dishwasher electrics are very simple. Listen, uh, I went downstairs, I turned off my breaker um, and still, I'm gonna double check it with my proximity tester. These are awesome. If the power's on, it'll flash red. And very good. I think we're good. Oh, no, it usually beeps too if you have a fresh battery. That's fine. Nice to have one of these. Just a little little safety device there. Turn this off. There we go. So what we got to do is line up and strip our wires. Okay, and then we're gonna put on our connector. Now these, you can buy these things at Home Depot, little packages of like five. Okay, until the sheathing starts to come through from the wire cover. Note, if you ever need to test wire to see, you can always go like this and close your eyes. If the power was on, it would blow up. <laughs> I've used that many times before. All right, here we go. Now, we're just gonna be connecting white to white, black to black, and then green to the ground screw that's in the machine. 
And this little grommet actually clips right in here. All right. And we got it. Very good. There. I want to hear that clip. Okay, so we're going to back off the screw and wrap our wire around that for the ground. Boy, it sure pays to have little fingers in situations like this. You can actually use your strippers. Grab the end of your wire and maneuver things. Pinch them together. There we go. Now, when you're using a 14-2 wire with an appliance wire like this, you're going to want to have the smaller can't use the great big rump, the great big wire caps. You have to use the little ones. They, they just won't grab properly. Bend them back into position. Here we go. It's just a little bit too long. Put the box back on. <laughs> Ugh. We're just going to screw on our kick plate now to keep all of our mechanicals safe. And adjust the height. Here we go. Now time for the door. <laughs> all right, so there's only two more steps for the dishwasher and then we'll get on with installing our stove. But all we had to do was just attach all the hardware on this panel according to the instructions. They got pre-drilled holes. Nice and simple. We just set this up against the, the area here and give it a push and lock it in place. So now you want to set your depth. Okay. Nice. Hold that position there because we have a quartz we can't screw up to the top. We're actually going to go through the side. And I'm going to do that right now. But before I can, I have to pre-drill the hole. Now there's a gasket on the inside and a gasket on the outside. So this area here actually stays dry during the cycle. So we're going to drill out this hole and then add a screw. On both sides. There we go. Installing your dishwasher is a lot like installing a window. You don't want to tighten the screws too much until you have both sides installed. <laughs> now I'm a moment of truth, eh? Now we got to turn on the water. And we'll flip on the breaker and we'll run this through for a cycle and see how she performs. Checking for leaks the whole time. Aside from the fact that I should have been wearing gloves because I messed this up, it doesn't really matter. The Z-Line stainless steel cleans off so easy. So we have two cycles, heavy and normal. 20 bucks a year to use a dishwasher if you're on natural gas, 31 if you're on electricity. The uh, Energy EcoSmart uh, rating applies to both cycles, which is awesome. Wow, yeah. I'm going to have to read the instructions to know how to use all this. So here we are, operating instructions. So you hit which function you want, then you hit this, and then you got four seconds to close the door. Look at how quiet that is. Wow. That's awesome. Okay, so let's just quick recap. We got our hood fan installed, we got our dishwasher installed. And you know what, that was pretty painless considering. And now we just gotta assemble the rest of the stove. Now, I cheated. I didn't DIY this, but I had to convert it from natural gas to propane because I live out in the country. And I called up the guy that did my furnace work and ran my new supply lines. And for $300, he came out, 
converted this and then ran the line and connected the stove and had it all ready for me when I got home from work. Money well spent. But the point is this, the, um, all of the hardware needed for the conversion came with the stove. The proper screwdriver size came with the stove. And so even he mentioned that he had a real easy time getting it done. So that was nice. Oh, I got lots of packaging. The folks over here at Z-Line, they take real good care of their products when they ship it. So like most oven doors, the bracket goes in right there as far as you can. And when you set it down, you'll see the separation when I push on the door and the weight is off. This pin is just there to keep the bracket from snapping back, right? So if you remove the two pins, that should be it. <laughs> wow, I'm glad they didn't reinvent the wheel because that works just amazing. And now it's also locked inside. So the only way that you can take the door out again is to put in the pins and then you can lift this, right? So these two pins now become somewhat valuable. We're going to put them with the rest of the spare hardware bag that I've got going in the drawer. Awesome. Just a quick note. Make sure that before you fire these things up and use them, remove all of your stickers and all the protective coating on all of the stainless steel. Remember, this does clean up with soapy water. Um, but just as a bonus, Z-Line did send me these abrasive pads. Now this snow stainless actually can be worked on with these abrasive pads to bring the finish right back to its normal glory if you find that it gets a little bit old and worn looking. Believe it or not, stainless steel can be wiped with a green scrubber pad. So they got instructions and they sent me the pads so I can do maintenance on it, which is awesome. Oh, but for the most part, a stainless steel cleaner is gonna take care of this and maintain it for a long time to come. Now remember, when you're renovating your house and you do it yourself, you're saving a fortune. So buy nice appliances, get good flooring and good fixtures. Don't be afraid to invest money on things that stay valuable as a part of the house. So you increase the value of your home, all right? Wow, I can't wait to cook dinner on this thing because it's been a long time since I've cooked on gas. Wow, just loving how clean that burns. Now, if anybody knows me and from our live shows, you might have heard that a lot of years ago I tried to become a chef. I still love to cook, but I never did become a chef. Look at that. Wow. Hey, thanks again to our friends at Z-Line for supplying the appliances for this installation. Listen, if you have yet to subscribe to this channel, then do so. Hit the link down below. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so YouTube tells you every time we put up a video. Very important. Now, if you enjoy this kind of content and you're learning lots about renovations, give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see how to install this hood fan, which honestly you need, if you're going to put a gorgeous stove like this in your house, you got to know how to install one of these bad boys. This is from Z-Line as well, and it goes in so simple. Click the link up here, okay? Learn how to take care of that as well. We will see you again in the next video.